I'm Will, he, him, and I play Moxie, she, her. I'm Sarah, she, her, and I play Freya, she, her. I'm Steve, he, him, and I play Aura, he, him. I'm Immy, she, her, and I play Amaya, she, her. I'm Mike, he, him, and I'm playing Eugene Bannantyne, he, him. I'm Ruthie, she, they, and I play Sentinel slash Jax, they, them. I'm Charlie, he, him, and I'm your DM. You guys uh, left Del Nori on the way to Sahira, and uh, the first stop was Talbenary, where you got, not only did you find Dom in a bit of a pickle, but you got yourselves into a bit of a pickle, and you um, decided to join him in his quest to find a secret gateway under the city, which was successful, except for the giant spider and the toxic alchemical waste that was... Spiders. There were many spiders. There was also one giant one. Yeah. Um, and several <coughs> large ones. And several large ones, yes. Yeah. Harley-sized spiders. Yes, yes. Um, Harley's dog. Thank you very much. <laughs> Harley's yes. not, like, a child. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I love them. Uh, um, but you successfully slew yeah. said spiders um, and made your way back up into Talbenary, the workshop city, where you thought, you know what, before we leave, let's find out the let's arsehole that's for this. Yeah. Let's, let's take a hit and out. You, you <laughs> found, <laughs> you found I a misread goblin. that situation terribly. <laughs> no, you misread that situation excellently. <laughs> I'm just going to scare them. <laughs> Here's your bomb, sir. Right. People don't lie. Okay, yes. Well, you met a goblin whose name was a Gentle... A, a goblin whose name was Gentle Clive. And he had a grudge against the same man who was responsible for the toxic waste, the, the kind of... the merchant who owned the workshops that were mass-producing parts for artificing. Um, and you didn't like him very much. You bought some coil stones off of him, but then you left and you decided to give Gentle Clive your full support and you gave him a <laughs> now, chemical firebomb, yeah. Anyway, to scare. it was Not he to said. Kill. Clive said, "I'm just going to scare him out of the city," and he did scare him. Out. He's no longer in the city. Alive. He's not in any city. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, but you, that, that so Dom decided to join you because he felt that it was um, a bit too risky to stay in Talbenary at that point. And you went back into the sewers through the gateway, the sigil way, this kind of subterranean old method of teleportation that was left by the Basilian Elves many, um, many decade or more than decades ago centuries ago um and you appeared in a tomb the smell of vegetation seeping in through the only gap in the rock and you realized that you were in Baraxian valley successfully um there were another few locations available in on the sigil way um, we can always come back to that if you need to you did mark your location with an object that I've forgotten because it was a rather mundane object. I hope you remember what that was. Yeah, it was a map. Uh, yes, Del that's right. <laughs> uh, it was useless so mundane. It's a useless map of Del <laughs> um, And you picked your way through the Baraxian Valley um, forest, eventually finding a small town of Baraxus. You're forgetting about the wild night we had. You oh, did have a wild absolute night. absolute lads on tour yeah. night. Yeah, I can't. I just can't repeat what was, you know, what happened. It was, it I just was love just that it started so civilized. It was literally like New Year's, just like us getting ready <laughs> and having a lovely glass of wine over dinner and ending yeah. with rage cake. No, it's right. Oh, we were dragging the carcass magically as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah that was yeah. Yeah. It's it's true. What happens in the salt house stays in the salt house. A bit traumatic. Yeah, it's okay. You had a cat. You had a camping night out in the salt house in which you created the most horrific balloon animal. <laughs> uh, and, um, but now we have veal pancetta. <laughs> you do. Yes, you have, you have some veal. Uh, it's venison. Venison, sorry. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, other things happened was that Moxie um, went out into the forest and, and met, met with Zapes, um, poured her heart out, well... Very yelled. angry. Heart <laughs> yelled out. her heart out. Uh, yelled her heart out at um, Zapes and the way that he treated her. And he, at that point, uh, decided to reveal who he was. And his, it was uh, Batista. 
uh, changed, aged by many, many decades in a place called the Refracted Realm. Um, he was stolen there by Onru, betrayed by um, Pharaoh, um, the devil of Christomar, who now works for Julian. Um, and he managed to escape by changing himself and sort of molding himself with the Refracted Realm. But um, you learned a fair, a fair bit about uh, that. He then made your way into Baraxas town. Uh, oh, and he gave Moxie a spell as well. Um, and in Baraxas, you avoided the Sweets of Whimsy initially and went into the Old Mill Inn, where you met with Mary, the landlady, and you had another lovely night, except for an elf that popped up a bit drunkenly. Um, oh, it. yes, pointed out to Amaya that um, there had been a pari in town looking for her. Um, and then she knocked him out. Like one punch. Yeah. Just one punch. One punch, one uh, punch woman. <laughs> you say knocked out, you mean killed. <laughs> he was almost, well, yeah, he was knocked out. It was not a non lethal attack, so. Um, he's dead. But yeah, he's fine. Uh, and then after the a very civilized and comfortable evening, you, uh, well, during. No, it was in the morning when you went to the Sweets of Whimsy. Sorry, I'm all over the place. I did go Sorry. for like a midnight you went for a stroll. Wonder. You went for a while. Came back. That was what. Yeah, that was what happened. You went for a nice midnight stroll and absorbed the hometown. Very, de- very decrepit compared to when you were last here. There's, there was uh, graffiti saying "Fuck Lucard," who's, a, who's the, the Duke of, of Baraxas and the surrounding area. Um, seemed to have abandoned the people of the town for some reason. Uh, and then in the morning, you and along with your with your friends went to the Sweets of Whimsy, um, your sweet shop, your family home, and you explored. You, you unlocked with the spare key that was under the pl- under the plant pot, and you made your way through the house. Wasn't there one the under basement. every? <laughs> yes, <laughs> you guys. Every, every, every oh, we did also take the job with the curator because that was the night ah, before. You did take the I've job. I've just found that. Mm, thank in you my very much. Notes. Yes, you you finally used your knock uh, card for the curator, and you went in. You accepted the job of um, the uh, of going to the Verdant Range in search of a shard of, of the Heartstone that would that, that you know Zathir is after in order to sort of reforge a body for his dead god. Um, you took that. You signed up with uh, the Collectorate. Uh, we are now part of and representatives of um, the curator and you have three days to visit them under the br- I believe under a bridge I've given I've got instruction here if you wish to hear them again uh, what, it, what it said a meeting point in three days time um, you were told that it would not be a human that it was some kind of construct that you would be meeting and um, that that was that three days time the time is now ticking down um, and we went to the Sweets of Whimsy, where... Uh, it wasn't very whimsical. It wasn't whimsical anymore. Shelves were empty, a bit dusty. But Eugene made his way down into the basement, um, as instructed by the lexicon, in search of the shiny <coughs> dot on his map. And you figured out the puzzle that was um, like locked away, this, this stone uh, section of wall. You entered a small nook where you found a lockbox with many... I think there was four different alchemical and artifice locks that have riddles on them. Uh, And you also found a hip flask that had one small message in Invisible Ink that said, um, I I believe it said, good luck, my son. Yeah, something like that. Uh, Something heartfelt. (laughs) And that... Go forth, bitch. (laughs) That is where we will begin today's session. I'd like two bottles of cider brandy, please. This is ten gold a bottle. Right, I'm having two. No, I'm having three. Thirty gold. Easy. Can I take three as well, please? Yep, Mary has now been cleared out (laughs) of her cider brandy. Thanks, Mary. You spent 60 gold. That's more than, like, a normal person would make in, like, five years. I have I have lots of gold. <laughs> or something. So do I. <laughs> and you gave me 10 because I kicked off. Okay. Um, so, yes, we're in the Sweets of Whimsy. You've just got the lockbox and the flask in your hand, Eugene. Uh, look what I found in this uh, strange office that I never knew it was there. Oh. I think it was... So I tell them the, the riddles. <laughs> Do you want to repeat them? <laughs> I mean, I have them, but <laughs> sure thing. Okay, so Eugene, the the riddles said number one. So it's this big lock box to remind everyone. It's fucking heavy, and you think it's got to be made of some strange material like tungsten or something like that. It's so like heavy. Some tungsten. <laughs> um, yes, uh, and. Uh, 
or it could be this magic, magic part of an enchantment. Um, and you can't see any locks other than the shackles in the splits of the lid. And, the, and on the top each is a marking. And the first one says, how many Ballantines does it take to sufficiently run a sweet shop? Number two, I am not a person, but one must meet me to make chocolate snap and shine and delight. What am I? The third is an odd one. In place of an inscription, there is a large, oddly shaped hollow space, um, probably the size of um, a kind of large walnut, maybe a bit bigger than that. Um, and around that is inscribed the perfect place for a nice sniff. And the fourth one is a small hole with a needle in it. Um, and the inscription is a touch of the right stuff. Well, um, so should we do this here or? Yeah, it seems like the place. Where are you in the yeah. basement? Are you, where are you guys? In the, yeah, in the basement. Yeah. We're in the basement. Surrounded by loads of sugar. It seems. I'll walk around just inspecting which you ones are all right. Just, <laughs> use a barrel of sugar. Roll an investigation check. Ooh! Can, uh, <laughs> um, can Zeal help? Uh, sure. Thank you. It's a simple enough check. Great. Eight. An eight. Uh, yep. You find lots of different types of sugar. One of them's a bit coarser than the other one. Not <laughs> sure why. Uh, but you do find a case that's covered in dust, and you just curiously open it, and it is full of uh, a special kit that Eugene would know what it is. But for you, it just looks like a lo loads of glass vials and droppers. I'll just wait for Eugene to be ready <laughs> to tell me what supplies he wants. <laughs> How many Ballantines did it take to run Is this just how many Ballantines there are, or is this some kind <coughs> of, hmm? Well, how many people would you uh, have running the shop? Well, Mama, Papa, uh, Theodore and Tabitha uh, would... Uh, Tabitha. Papa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Absolutely that's, that's kind of Tabitha. Tabitha. <laughs> would, uh, would pop in every now and again, so that's four, I guess. Uh, myself, Henry and Magnus. So how seven. many would you need to do all of the specific bits? Uh, well, Mama would be selling the goods out front with uh, Fia and Tabby, I guess. Yeah, because if you lost, if you lost any one of you, would you be as good at running your sweet shop as you would without? No, I would say so not. So then, yeah, it's probably all of you. Did you say Milton? I forgot, I don't know if I heard of that. Well, Milton hasn't been around for decades, dear voice. <laughs> <laughs> I was just curious because you're talking about losing a Valentine, that was all. Um, all right. So seven without Milton, eight with, but he hasn't run the shop What, what does Milton bring to the table? Does he bring anything to the table? Um, oh, he's <laughs> always to in the clouds. Yeah, so that's a But no, also, is it sufficiently on a sweet <laughs> shop? So it would Fishing. not necessarily optimally, if you had Milton, it would be the perfect amount of Valentine's for a yeah. sweet shop. Yeah. Sufficiently. So should we, should we say seven? Sans Milton. <laughs> yeah, unless like your dad always thought the, the sweet shop was like below sufficient without Milton, maybe. <laughs> Unless he was thought was the It's rubbish now. Yeah. Or did he mean, as long as there's one Ballantine this is out there, yeah. you can run the sweet shop? Exactly. So would that be one? Like if you believe her, kind of like that. Yeah, <laughs> like is it more of a like optimistic riddle? <laughs> yeah. I mean, We've had two weeks to work on this. <laughs> I only said it to him yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> With all of us, could you direct us to run the sweet shop? Absolutely not. <laughs> but we're not Valentines. Well, just Maybe not. Maybe we take not, one to organise uh, yeah, this. Might be able to just, sorry, or not. <laughs> <laughs> New acquaintance found. Uh, <laughs> just not where you your mean, skills lie. You mean one Valentine with a bunch of regular I can chop like nothing else. Folk. Don't you, you remember the onions? A sufficient sweet shot. <laughs> <laughs> or is the onions? Or is Charlie, what's the onions? All the onions on the boat. <laughs> Can Eugene, um, like, roll to, like, Because we no. have two answers. No. Well, it's I'm going to no. try for seven. Or, or okay. maybe, like, because it's a bad... Shut the fuck up, he's decided. Because it's Valentine's, he only means two, so maybe you just need two, Maybe. Yeah, it was just your your mum and your dad wish yeah. they'd never had yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Any number between one and eight. <laughs> Take I'm going to punt for seven. Okay, so on the top of the box it says uh, inscribed in um, dwarvish with the gnomish kind of inflections. Um, it says speak, so you know that it is it is voice activated in some way. So I'll say it in gnomish. Okay. And the number you're saying is seven. And how do you say that in gnomish? Um, 
the wallet. Fred. How does I know you speak? <laughs> Like a Muppet. Like you know, Muppet. Maybe quite like, like Beaker. Welsh. Like Beaker. Welsh. A little bit more whimsical. I don't want to keep saying whimsical. Pop-a-dee-pee. but <laughs> Welsh, is, Welsh is pretty whimsical. Well, yeah. But more so. Okay, so you say seven. Pippity. No, he says. Pippity. Seven. <laughs> seven. Seven. <laughs> and nothing happens. Oh, oh, oh shit. Try, try, try one. one. Yeah. Try eight. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'll try eight first. Eight? Yeah. It says, property. <laughs> That's very uh, Nothing happens. Aww. Do you have to do them all in a row, maybe? <laughs> well, no, because one, I think you need to prick They're individual your locks. Yeah. So it'll be like one mm. lock break. <laughs> well, I'll do the tempering chocolate one, because that's quite easy. That's obvious. Okay. Uh, one, one thing I will say is that when you say it with intention at the box, you do feel a vibration through it, so you know that it is reacting to your answer. Cool. Do not, it's not that you're not saying it loud enough. <laughs> yeah. Every, everything Puppety. inside has just been destroyed. Puppety! <laughs> Boo! Okay, number two was... So, yeah, so the temperate chocolate one. Mm-hmm. So... Well, I don't know, tempting chocolate question? or the temper point? Or? It says, I am, a per- I am not a person, but one must meet me to so make chocolate number. snap and shine a delight. What's the tempering chocolate temperature? I didn't look that up. Well, you do. Do you really? Yeah. Eugene would know. Yeah. Roll an intelligence check. Does Amaya <laughs> know? Yeah, Amaya would know. <laughs> Amaya would know. And if... You can help. You can okay, either roll. I'm helping and... you. Well, I'm... Okay, cool. Uh, so what what type of check was it, sorry? Just a straight intelligence, but you're getting um, proficiency and Amaya's help. Uh, so that'll be, uh, five, uh, be 19. 19 yeah. total. You are pretty sure that this... We'll go in degrees because I'm not going to make up some kind of fantasy. I actually, I prefer Kelvin. <laughs> well, you've done it before. Yeah, you've you done it before. You've changed yeah. the name. Yeah, yeah, just call it. I think it's, it's, it's degrees Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We've done this before. Um, and to be fair, it's Mike, you, I thought it was 31 degrees, but Eugene yeah. knows all of this. Good. So <laughs> you would have to... So, so he, he gives the full list. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, yes. it depends. Just how you want to um, arrange the crystals within the chocolate. For it to start. That is perfect. Oh, it's this the is crystal weird. structure. This is... Do you say that? Uh, in, a, in is that your answer? Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah. The thirty, whatever. Thirty-one was it? Well, okay. You you, you know that the answer is a variety of different things, and that it's not as simple as one temperature. Though. Well, yeah. I would say it depends on the chocolate and what you're actually going for. Okay. Then the box reacts, and you see the shack the shack and go. <laughs> so can I basically can I say it depends for every answer? <laughs> I'm just gonna open. You explain in gnomish that it's different types of chocolate, and it depends on the crystal structure, and it goes. Bing. Oh, the box knows um, it's UG. <laughs> also, does the thing, the, the subtle doorway upgrade, did that come online with the last one in case it's relevant again? Because it's only been a day. Hmm. Would you want to use it? Because you won't be able to use it for a week. Well, I can't use it for a week anyway, because we've already gone in. Oh, true. Then, so sure. It, okay, yeah, I'll let you um, Everyone has advantage on one roll for the next now six days. Oh, so wow. if it's... Oh. You have, like, effectively an inspiration dice from staying in the sort of house. So every time we go in, you get inspiration. Mm. You're inspired by the nice wow. wine. <laughs> it's like for the next six once, days. Once per Just week. one. Yeah. For, so one for the next six days. You could use it today or you could use it in a week. But, yeah. It makes nice. it valuable. I'm going to use the new dice as the inspiration one. Me too. There is a box on your sheet somewhere. If you've got a physical sheet, you can, you can mark and it. And on D&D Beyond. D&D Beyond, yeah. There you go. Right, so good sniff time. Yes, so you've got number two is unlocked. This one says, so it, all it says is uh, the perfect place for a nice sniff. Does and the there's box a hole. fit in The box? Does, yeah, your nice smell device. Does oh. it fit in the hole? Were you going to stick your nose in the hole? I kind of wanted to sniff yeah. the hole. <laughs> but no, is it the right sort of shape for the nice smell device? You take out the nice smell device and look at it, and it's like sort of the size of a walnut-ish, oh, cool. a bit bigger. I'm gonna try to insert the nice smell device. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> try and orient it. Takes because it's an odd shape. Yeah. And you're like, okay, and then and then it, you turn it and slots in, and it seems flush around the outside, and the shackle pops open. Mm. Should we go back and answer question one before you? We force you to prick your finger. I don't on know. That. You don't want to prick my finger, but the sign. Get the mace. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, right. Everyone gets a turn stabbing Eugene. Who's had a go? <laughs> <laughs> I 
Can Eugene sort of ascertain if there's a deeper meaning behind the first question? Sure. Is it just a man and his boy? <laughs> I won't make I won't make you roll because it's a per, you know personal question. Um, you think if you take a moment, you think your father feels that everyone was critical and everyone played their role, but he also was very proud of the family as individuals and that you were all very intelligent in your own way um, and that you all kind of embodied the spirit and the heart of the, of the shop. So you think he would be, it would be a sentimental answer, maybe? So one Bantine. There's one Bantine left in a shop. It can run. It's still a shop. Yeah. <laughs> your brother is doing it. Yes. Mm. Damn, we fully Deep. forgot Magnus. <laughs> <laughs> There you go, he's running the sweet shop. So, yeah. you, so you hear Eugene pause for a moment and then say a load of whimsical words in no Boosh. Yes, boo. <laughs> <laughs> and the little chapel goes, pink. Right I'm going to write down the gnomish numbers. <laughs> so boo's one, boo boo's two. <laughs> boo boo. Pippity is uh, seven. seven. <laughs> Pop D's eight. <laughs> Fucking hell. <laughs> so you only have the last Flip-flop lot. Flip-flop is free. <laughs> right, uh, who's it, stabbing him this time? Who wants to do the deed? <laughs> who's done it? I did it last time, so... And who wants to Fred's laugh? Who wants a turn? Fred done it I'll do times. it. I'll do it. <laughs> Unless there's, like, there's this, like, you put your finger in and it's like a... Yeah, it's like a needle poking out. Okay. Just, oh, so you just <laughs> go like... Just, 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 oh, just be gentle. <laughs> just, like, twist it. Twist it. <laughs> oh my god. Pop it. Oh, sorry. Do you twist it? Do you follow Freya's advice? It's not pop it. No, just pop it. <laughs> no, just the pop. Just the pop. <laughs> okay, yeah, you you with Sentinel's help, little shove. Ow! There's a pinprick. Um and do you see Do I go for the same finger or do I do different fingers? What do you reckon? I <laughs> fully also think that arm. I went in with a dagger so that you thought it was a dagger and then surprised you at the last minute so you didn't know where it was coming from. Nice. <laughs> My eye. <Yeah. laughs> like you're injecting a child. <laughs> oh. Here it comes. <laughs> Uh, and you look down at the needle, and you're like, oh, there's a well of blood on your finger, and you look and well you see there is a, a, drop, a drop of blood. Why does it always needle. have to be blood? It's what magic, else do you man. want it to be? <laughs> I don't know, like um, syrup? I think it's a different finger because um, you've already heavily bandaged the last <laughs> It's yeah. still got a plaster on it. You've got one ruined From finger. dust yeah. Uh And after a while, the needle, you feel it vibrate. <laughs> and the final shackle opens and you feel the lid go slack, loose. Gosh, eh? What do you reckon's inside? Uh, well, I don't know, you should open it to find out. <laughs> Where's your sense of wonder, Amaya? I think it's magic. At the moment, it could be anything. I mean, it's probably... Yeah, it's this fucking you open it up, then you'll know. <laughs> <laughs> and then, no you can, then you can unlock the big, with the big long key. Wait, we've already done that. We've already we've used, done that. Usually it's just like Don't a one-use per item. It's just, like, yeah, um, it's on the side now, it's massive staff with a key on it. <laughs> I should take it into battle. <laughs> <laughs> so I Keys, <laughs> 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 I open the uh, chest, but as I go, I can't look. What's in there? A bomb. What, what is it? Don't, nobody is it look. I just is it turn is it Eugene's paper? head to look at it. There it is. Is it a head? In the, it's oh, a oh, it is. It's just a shrunken head. Uh, you see, um, it's it's very clean inside, velvet lined. Um, there is a letter. Um, you see, there is also a, a beaker of some kind. It's got a wax cork. I've got a cork and it's wax dipped to seal it. There is a, a lump of something that looks like a cube or a paperweight of some sort, and there is a long rod as well. Oh, okay. <laughs> Should we start with the uh, the letter? Sure. So you take it out from underneath the, the bits and bobs. Um, What's that for? Yeah, that's actually originally gnomish. Yeah, it that's, was. Yeah. It just yeah. worked its way into common. Oh, yeah. I see. I see. Bits and bobs. It is a letter to, to you, Eugene. Do you want me to read it out? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> is there a date on it? 
There is no date. I just want to know what the numbers for five and six are. <laughs> <laughs> what about nine and ten? Yes. No, no, no much work in base nine, there is no time. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, we've got to yes. <laughs> say <laughs> oh. <Okay. laughs> Anything above that is just pure okay. cod's wallet. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, cod's wallet, that's another word for knowledge. Okay. Anyway. Well, a hundred, we have ninety. Yeah, <laughs> right. So, the letter, it says, My boy, the rigour will take me. I'm not sure when, but... My dear, dear boy, I wish to give you what I have left. I think you already know, but alchemical and artifice, al- alchemy, alchemy and artificing are two sides of the same coin. And that, yeah. and that coin, and that coin was once called in writhing. I stumbled upon this when I was a bushy-headed. I should probably do his voice. <clears throat> when I was a bushy-headed <laughs> Ballantine. Fresh from the fours, uh, fresh from the forest, and plopped up into the guild. <laughs> I became sufficient at such magics that I never, that was never gifted at enriving. But if you are reading this after all that you have been through, I have put it, and all that I have put you through, then, my dear boy, I believe with every ounce of life left in me that you are ready to meet with the machinations of the entanglement. But oh no. <laughs> to do that. Also, all he's put me through is really small nooks. <laughs> <laughs> That's been he pretty keeps much... asking you to do blood as well. <laughs> yeah. So much blood. Is that gonna be like Eugene's character growth that by the last like one you can <laughs> yeah. do it yourself? I can, I can give finally give blood. <laughs> <laughs> but to do that, you must be a part of it, the entanglement. You must, like all good things ingest the words themselves. I have distilled it from my blood. It appears very much like mercury, but it is the Lyplurilline language made to manifest. It is the language that in that the great scribe Varden created to write the laws of the entanglement into being. In arriving is much like alchemy, my son, except we write not in Elvish into our maid gen, but Lyplurilline. And we argue with the deep planes that we, that what we write must simply be. It is closer to essay writing than alchemy, but to understand the language of everything, like pluraline, you must ingest the essence, consume it, and learn the language of the enrivers, and forge, and with it, forge your own lexicon. Ask your old lexicon for help if you must. It should know more with that. New Lyra, like Pluraline Rod. Um, you will have questions, I'm sure. Uh, I hope I can answer them in person one day, but if not, then I will tell you two pieces, very sensitive information about the like Pluraline people. A spice blend of a secret recipe, if you will. I hope they will help. First, First is that the Lyplurilline people are not entirely dead. There is a secret group of guilds outside of the normal guild table that we are all aware of, and the endless list of professions. The ancient guilds, like Alchemy, the Whispered Word, are older than even the Basilman Empire. The group was founded by the Basilmans, and one member from each of the guilds inherits that secret chair. They are called the Basilman Guilds, and among them is a member from each little-known guild. The guild called the Written Word, I believe, is a member of, is a Lyplurilline Tierlar. And secondly, as I'm sure you're aware, the Lyplurilline people made the caches. I found a few. You have found them in step with me after I hid them again in some cases, as I had hoped. But I did not find all the caches. I found none to the east of the Empire, yet I know they exist. The cache's original purpose was to find new potential in human kin outside of the Lyplurilline blood, to tell of their secret, their story, their history, their folly, and their fall, and most of all, their greatest secret. You have seen glimpses of it, as I did when I was a boy. I know you have. You spoke of it once. Your dream. Keep following it, my son. 
yours, Papa. Isn't he great? <laughs> <laughs> Did you read it aloud? Yeah. <laughs> okay. It's yeah. very cute. Oh. Does he mean I must drink this strange concoction? Yeah. I mean, I don't like it. as he said, uh, distilled from his blood. Oh, that was good. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. That's me. It's a bit like <laughs> June. Has anyone seen June too? No. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Eugene's about to become a vampire. <laughs> Should I drink? Do I want to drink it? Should I? What, I mean, yeah. Sounds yeah. You drink everything pretty cool. Else. Do you want what us to make a... You drink everything out. Yeah, do you want uh, us to yeah. make a cocktail out of it? <laughs> <laughs> Mix it with stuff. <laughs> It'll go real well with tequila. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You I can, can just make a taste I of... I can make a taste different, yeah. Can no, make a taste I, of, I suppose, of cider bread. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose I should have it as it was intended. Can I give it a whip? In a cocktail. Right. Sure. Right. Right. Up and give it. Or do you think I should drink this first or do the rod first? I think have this first yeah. and taste the stuff in the I rod. Because then you'll be really sad if you can't read yeah. the rod. Yeah. Also, do you get to make your own lexicon? Can you set its own voice? Is it Google Maps? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's German. <laughs> so, um, in the conical flask, it's it's got a, a wax seal around the top. You break that. And then there's a cork there. You, you break that. Um, I drop it. I don't. Yeah. <laughs> Within it is um, fingers. It's a, it's a, like a, a strange, like a plasma material. There's a heavy metal at the bottom, and you can see that it's 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 not effervescing, but it's almost moving. And at the top, you can see at the very surface of the metal, uh, it's kind of infinitely splitting into cubes and then reforming back into itself. That's cool. And it says, drink me. <laughs> yeah. What does it smell like? Um, it doesn't smell like much, to be honest. The plasma, it's like an oil or a plasma of some sort that could be could be protecting it. You know that it's probably holding it, holding it in, you know, stable conditions. If it's an oil, get some vinegar. Dip it. Yeah. It's bread time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to eat it with bread. <laughs> <laughs> Someone give me Spread a breadstick. Get me that for country. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, now, do you reckon? Yeah, yeah, do yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, go for it. Just, just deep breath, chunk yeah. it back. Down in one, yeah. Chop, 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 chop. I like to drink with Eugene, because Eugene is our big. I get up on the table. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I, I drink the weird heavy metal plasma goo. Uh, you drink your dad's blood. <laughs> it goes down not well. Um, is it gloopy? It's the, the oil is it is like a warm mineral oil of some sort, and it kind of pools. Um, and then you then you feel the weight of the metal as it goes onto your tongue, and it feel it tastes it tastes metallic and chemical. You just swallow it. So when you hear like, your dad saying, "I didn't mean drink it." <laughs> <laughs> You idiot! <laughs> you fool! I'm meant to identify. <laughs> you don't feel any different. Stomach feels a bit unsettled, maybe. Are you okay? Didn't taste as nice as I hoped. Damn. Yeah. yeah. Just open I mean, like, pop a barrel of sugar not... ready. <laughs> yeah. Okay, can I just take a of sugar into my mouth? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you don't feel any different. Um, well. Maybe the rod will have answers then, so I'll uh, get the lexicon out. <laughs> and the rod will have answers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you should have. You should have not. Fuck it out. What? Why did you do that? For an idiot? It's only one of these. <laughs> Step one. Don't drink. <laughs> Fuck. I shouldn't have to put this in the instruction guide that it's happened before. <laughs> this is actually a suppository. <laughs> so it's actually a, yeah. oh. See, I'll uh, insert the rod into the uh, cube. Very nice. All that's again, Jesus. I'm sorry if you say it that way. I will insert I'm gonna the rod oh, Jesus. into the hole of which it, it meant goes. Brace yourself. It meant against the vial, not the rod. <laughs> Brace yourself. <laughs> I get the Are mood. Are you right in a position where you want to hear more of the law, potentially? As I'm very conscious that you guys are in a funny mood. <laughs> and you're still in the basement. It's as good a place as any. Yeah, well, what's wrong with the basement? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so huddled around one of the workshop benches. <laughs> Wait, before I do that though, let's, could I, I drank it. Was I supposed to? What are you talking about, Master Valentine? The strange heavy metal oil. 
um, that Papa said to drink but or consume, and I drank it, but I'm not sure if I should have. I, I don't have much information about that, <laughs> but I am as a... As it you implies taught, you have some. Well, <laughs> only as much as what you have taught me, Master Valentine, which is that this is one... Me, right? <laughs> if I go to die... <laughs> No, no. Um, apologies. I seem you seem to be somewhat dis- dis- distressed. Um, no, what you taught me was that one should respect their elders, especially their papas. Oh, okay. Well, hopefully this rod has a bit more information. Ah, very well. And it reads. So you take the relaxed canal, you dump it on the table, and you kind of slot in this strange rod that has those like carvings that are somewhere between sound waves and hieroglyphics and you hear uh, you you hear in your mind um, a scratch, almost like a record scratching and spinning up and picking up seamlessly from where it was seeming from where it left off as some of these have, they're almost fragments of each story it cuts in quickly with their newfound understanding of the deep worlds of the deep words of the entanglement, the like plural line, the TL are used in writhing to change their nature from chaos to a more neutral state, leaving their very flesh a war of pigments. But it was the very imbalance of chaos in the entanglement created by the Eurekos that spawned the TLR itself that was on their untimely downfall. For that imbalance had already drawn things from places beyond. <laughs> Does it echo? Beyond. Yeah. beyond. beyond. <laughs> the outer places, untouched by the ones above, where things that were truly alien thrived. The first was the starfall of the eight daughters, seeds of the worm gods, who once hatched bore a message for the, the, the Oracos to seek balance and not cleanse chaos, for they had seen worlds birthed and killed by such imbalances. But the Oracos were pure of heart and foolish, and in their folly they did not listen. The creatures that fell into the entanglement next were the worst, of, were the worst kind, from the worst place. A Yildrez, the first sun-eater of the malignant world, It burrowed into the entanglement and into the pocket where chaos should be, where the Tirlar dwelled. But by the grace of gods, its form was not made for this world, and it could not live as it wished. Bodiless, it was like an ocean, devoid of all things, but its power was undeniable and irrefutable, and it bent most of the Tirlar to its will. A select few rose to it, becoming the being's disciples. The Tirlar master craftsmen of disquisitions were enslaved. They were, throw, they were to throw their efforts into making the creature a body, and the creature that came to be known as Terranin found the body it wished to have in kind when it killed a Eurekos exploring Tirlos in search of chaos to cleanse. The Terranin placed the Eurekos body down as example and tore out its heartstone. Enslaved, the Tirlar got to work. Their task, to make that which a child of the ones above was grown from, a heartstone. The next era, named the Corruption, lasted over 20,000 years. (laughs) Each passing millennia saw a surge of the magical tides, and on the 20th, the Tirlar's surge pyres were complete. And at the next surge, the pyres ignited between worlds harnessing its power into a point that bound Yildrez to entanglement. The false coil heart was forged, and the unbeing walked the plains. And you hear it crackle <laughs> down, and you're back in the room. So I share that with the group. Not going about what I just drank, though. Not my <laughs> Maybe you wouldn't have been able to understand it if you hadn't. Ooh, impossible to tell now. That's interesting. Oh, it did say that, didn't it? <laughs> didn't it say that the, the rod was like... Or a line? Lime? No, I it's think like, it's just... Because you've read them before. Yeah. And... Can I ask Lexicon about building another Lexicon? So I say that I'm supposed to forge my own one. Do you want to replace one? me? I know. <laughs> 
in arms. <laughs> oh, uh, hello, Master Valentine. What a strange story that was. Uh, how can I help? Uh, I've been instructed, I think, to create another lexicon. How do I... Oh. How do I go about that? <laughs> Uh, well, uh, but not to get rid of you, of course. No, 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 no. Uh, well, I am a product of um, an arriving. So, if you wish to create a lexicon, then you must arrive one. And how do I? How, how, where, where, where should I start? Well, um, it, tell me what you have been instructed to do, and maybe I can help. See, so, yeah, I quote part of the letter. Sure. That's right. Okay. Ah, well, uh, let, let me have a look at the material that you have been given. You can see in the, in the box there is a cube, there is a blank cube of some sort as well. Ooh. Well, uh, this... I hope I wasn't supposed to put that murky stuff inside it. <laughs> this, uh, <laughs> uh, this, this is um, a, a piece of inert metal pulled from Tyrlos that is often used as a surface for carving in... Uh, the in, the enrived essay, as it were, a disquisition after all is but an explanation and, an, uh, and a um, an argument as to which uh, as to the entanglement so that to make something real. Just to I've really fucked that up. You need to write on the cube so, <laughs> in like plural line so that you, it's, it's so like, direct. Yeah. It's like writing an essay to convince the universe that this thing has to exist. And that is what disquisition is. Cool. Just when exist. you succeed. Yeah, <laughs> just do it. So... Good night. Um, <laughs> you be this. Thanks. It, it, it's created with this like pluraline writing, an argument to the universe that this new form of lexicon must exist. You could theoretically write it on any surface and it would... Uh, should you, for example, wish to create a... Uh, would be useful to you, Master Valentine, some sort of quill um, that never ran out of ink then you could write that anywhere. Skilled enrivers would be able to write in thin air, and it would be created from thin air. But it would take a long time, of course, because convincing the universe of something is not a simple task. Oh. Though now you can speak <laughs> the same language. Oh, try saying something in lie pluraline. Uh, I say hello, let's get it lie pluraline. It sounds very strange. You didn't, for, for, you sort of, you make the decision on instinct as though you've always been able to do it. And when, when it comes out, it's almost like, um, it is like a, a vibration that sort of hums upward and jars downward. It's strange and you're not even sure how you're making the sound with your throat. What does it sound like relative to like? Yeah, do it. Like a, like a, ringing, <laughs> like a, like a ringing piece of metal okay. um, with like jarring kind of along it is very strange Ooh, that's pretty weird <laughs> though you've never made that noise before <laughs> are you okay? have <laughs> all the noises Eugene's made that's a new one that is I believe it Master Valentine if you show me the cube I, I can formulate some kind of instruction for you if you wish uh, okay I'll show him the cube very well we'll show it destroys it turns into the weird mist that sometimes displays the map and the light kind of looks at it almost like spotlights for a moment um, and you I believe I've, I've put this on d d Beyond Ooh. it will be called Cubic Alchemy the lexicon <laughs> continues the last thing that it says while you're like investigating um, when you enrive your new lexicon into being you will have one of your own uh, with one of your own design, with an inherent ability, it appears as part of the instruction. But, uh, Master Valentine, arriving as a fickle craft of, of hewing reality into material, um, you can make your own lexicon how you wish it. Um, it will, with it being made by you, it will have a closer bond to you, and um, and I, you know, I'm old and broken. Your new lexicon will be bright. Can you don't, say, don't say how such old is, things. How old is the lexicon? <laughs> Three. Pretty old. <laughs> like, very <old. laughs> I'm not going to be, like, tossing you aside or anything like that. Well, thank you very much. Um, should you need any advice throughout, uh, or any... Um, it's strange hearing the voice because it's very emotionless and normally kind of be hesitant. Uh, this is your first time writing, though, in the language of Lai Pluraline, after all, and, uh, 
well, I, I wish you well. Uh, thank you for taking me on your journey with you, Master Valentine. Oh. <laughs> Thinks it's immediately getting murked. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm not replacing you, I promise. Well, uh, you will have to likely attune to this new lexicon. I've got many slots. <laughs> Very well. <laughs> Can't you be the backup one? Like, you don't have your SIM card in that lexicon, but you can still yeah. use it. Yeah, 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 yeah. This could be my burner. <laughs> what, is the, what is the problem, uh, uh, Master Valentine? I, I'm, I'm, I'm confused. Well, I just... I, I feel I've, I've grown fond of you on our travels, and I don't want you to think that I'm just going to cast you aside for a newer model. I see. Well, I, Master Valentine, I, I may have a step, and this is likely my own poor description. But this is your lexicon and your disquisition, and you can write it how you wish. Um, I, and all we have learned, may be transferred into your new lexicon, if Ooh. that is something you wish. Oh, do that but give him, yeah. like, a fun voice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you just make him jump. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Cool. I'll try and find the notes, I'll send them to you. Yeah, cool. Then. Okay, so... You are in the basement still. <laughs> you would like to discuss notes. <laughs> right. I just want to check that I've got this right, because okay. I'm reading stuff from this far back in my notebook. <laughs> Thank you. So the Eurekos were trying to get rid of chaos. They were told in the starfall of the eight daughters, don't do that, it's bad. You need yeah. You need balance. Yeah. Right? The Eurekos were like, fuck that. Nah. Do what we want. Still hunting the Tealar because the Tealar's very nature that they are chaos. Mm -hmm. The, the Tealar went into the burrowings. Yes, in to hide from them. And then they are used in writhing to change their nature to be more neutral. Yep. The lack of chaos, because they became more neutral, is what brought Yildrez, a.k.a. the Star Eater, into the world. A.k.a. Terranin. A.k.a. Terranin. Um, because it, there was no chaos. So it was like, I can do that. I can fill that gap for you. <laughs> um, <Yes. laughs> like osmosis. And that's where I'm at. Also, I have a note that there is covered in hieroglyphics. Can Eugene use his memory and see if that hieroglyphics is the like pluraline language, please? Oh, I don't want him to translate him. it. <laughs> say all but of I it. would I would love <laughs> I'm not saying translate it, I'm not a complete arsehole, but does Eugene think of the fear? Uh, oh, no, 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 turn no, 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 turn into the fear. <laughs> Am I covered in the like pluraline language, bitch? <laughs> You see the tall and like horrible uh, figure. I don't fear. like it. <laughs> 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 Got that, the half metal body. You can see the what the warring pigments on half of his body. Punch, the punch, grey punch. and the black. Do uh, it, do it, bitch, do it. And then you see on his arm beautiful metal. Uh, I mean, beyond hewing that you would be you no know, possible. That it's su such fine craftsmanship. And you see on the plates. And on all, every single tiny gear and needle that make up the tendons of his hands, uh, you can see the language of like the. What does it say? Line. What well, does it? Well, from your memory. Because also, yeah, it's not going to be perfect. Yeah, and also. We use the memory ring, though. Uh, but it's a faded, I'm assuming, because we've not seen him in eight. If we'd have just seen him yes. and put him in, yes. What, what we'll say is, if okay, Sentinel roll an intelligence check and Eugene roll an intelligence check. So the impression... Into the lantern series. <laughs> 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 no. <laughs> Eugene rolled a I'm very perceptive, though. You are? And I was literally... What did you get? 18. Uh, cool. Was... What we're trying to do, so you know is recall the, who has the most accurate recollection of the I'm exact sort of shapes. I pretty close when he was in the lantern. Did I? Uh, that was his kind of, that was a Smoke. spiritual Smoke form. form. Your form right. in the lantern is not your same, for example. You're like a... You're like a, a dragon. A, well, can I try yeah. and remember? Cause yes. Will everyone like, try and remember? Yeah, anyone who anyone who wants to can try and remember. Oh, intelligence. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Why? I'm not going to roll. Memory. <laughs> 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 people. Oh. What did we get? 16. Okay. Yeah, less. 18. 18. Oh, like 10. Okay. 
so when we just roll like an intelligence check, or we just add in the your modifier, modifier cool. Uh, so that's a natural twenty for twenty five. <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> oh, so when we do that, we just yeah, it was a natural twenty. Anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you didn't bother. Class. Oh, there's no point. Me, literally no point. Me rolling. So Sentinel, you're as you fo- you focus yeah, your no. mind, you you the the symbols on your impression, the illusion that we created of him sharpen. Uh, but Eugene, now fluent in the language, it's. Like what well, it's like someone writing a you know an essay from a, a, a snapshot memory. There are some parts that look like recognizable, and it's enough to for anyone who wouldn't be able to read it to go, oh, that looks like that rod, but it, the words are not obviously the same. Um, from your own memory, now with your ability to read and write, <laughs> finally, you you can you can't obviously understand it from a single memory in the same way that Sentinel yeah. but with that role this uh, it was, number one it was much newer than everything that you've seen much fresher um, and you, it is so complex this creation it has an ability it has abilities uh, its argument for its existence is about supporting the life of this being it is bound to this being um, inextricably um, it is to um, carry on life in a way that is impossible to, to, to carry on life from wounds that no magic could heal. Um, and it gives him an, a number of, uh, of, of abilities. The only one that you can deduce is that there is some kind of tra- teleportation ability that involves cutting through planes and stepping through. And that, that is an ability of this disquisition. Um, so his whole body is a disquisition. Half of his body. When you killed him, yeah, the his lantern erupted in shards, and it sucked away the disquisition from his corpse. Right. Okay. And only half his body was remained. Over to you. It's, yeah. Right, Eugene. Yes. There's a box of crap over there. Do you need it? And how many? And uh, we can take eight. No, seven box it's not barrels. Crap. We can, uh, Sugar. No, that's not. That's not sugar. Oh, what, what are we looking at? Crap. <laughs> yes. It's a box of vials. Yes. It is a case filled with vials. This is These are your um, um, father, his collection that he made with Milton before Milton became bored. Like, in your opinion, Milton, he's not interested in it. He wasn't interested. He was too busy with other stuff. Uh, this was his only real foray into sweet making beyond the, the basics. And these are effectively flavour drops. There are Ooh. distillations and essences crap. of flavours. <laughs> hey, I thought, I thought it was, that's crap. That's all I knew. What was. does this smell like to you? What does it smell like to me? Crap? <laughs> yeah. Uh, there's a little bit of crap there. No, it's more like a licorice. Ooh. Oh, crap. <laughs> oh, yeah, it is crap. I don't take <laughs> that one. No, I do. Right, do you yeah. want to take this with us? Oh, yes, please. Would you like to put it in the house? How big are they? Is it it's quite a small a big... case. Yeah. Or you want right. it on you? I'll insert it on my purse. <laughs> right, go and pick seven. You just one liquid. Seven crates of yeah. sugar that you want. Go and pick them. I also put loads in my pockets. <laughs> Lots of sugar. There's like par- like palm sugar crystals. Oh, yeah, some of that stuff. Yeah. Is there like invert sugar? That's yeah. Like like invert glucose. Pack. Yeah. There's all sorts. Yeah. Let's grab a bit of everything. Right. Yeah. So we all get a crate. <laughs> We all go to the soul house with our crates. So that you're using your daily to yep. do this, very nice. We're not going to get into a fight today. So you go into the soul house, everyone carrying a crate. Everyone gets a short rest before a hit for 10 minutes rolling these cr- barrels down the rock. Do you need it? No. No, it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> We've done nothing. This yeah. is important to me because I feel like it's going to be fun for my guys. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. Right, in the go into in the, the pantry, pantry yep. with everything else. Now of inventory. Okay. Oh, and I run up and I put one of the bottles of fire, uh, the cider whisk, uh, cider brandy in the office. Very nice. On his desk. Yeah. Lovely jubbly. Lovely jubbly. <laughs> Done. Okay. Everybody out. Over to you guys. You're back in the room again. Back in the back in shop. the room. So we've got to get to Sahira in two and a half days. Um, how? <laughs> Um, yeah, do, I assume I know of transport. Yeah. Oh no, we, the, what's it called? The rutway. Mm-hmm. Let's do the rutway. What is that? What time is it now? 
Uh, mid, uh, it's probably approaching lunch. Where's Dom? Oh, we have time. He's been with us the whole we time. Leave. Well, um, I actually, th- I'm, I'm going to say he was in the pub. Sleeping <laughs> on the hangover. Pub. Oh, okay, so we've got one less. But we've only got six barrels of sugar. Damn I'm it. so sorry. <laughs> right, should we go and pick up that degenerate and then we make our merry way? Yeah. So what is the right way again? Is it like a train or like a boat? I can't remember. It is. Uh, it's more like it's like a cross between. So it's a canal that is that's dragged along on a wire, um, and there and they go like trains. There's one every like hour, two hours, something like that. And that's the quickest way to to hear. You can take a carriage, but it'll take uh, a couple of days. I yeah. believe. How far no, away is the rock way from where we are? About an hour walk. And is it in the same way as the? Is it in the same direction as the pub, or the other way from the pub? Uh, you would go past the pub. Yeah. Right, okay, we can pick that degenerate up on the way. <laughs> <laughs> otherwise, he's staying. <laughs> otherwise, I'm gonna call. Otherwise, I was gonna call him and make him run. <laughs> Lovely. That'd be fun anyway. It would be fun anyway. <laughs> okay. I'm scared to do that. <laughs> Oh, you fucking generous. So you back in the pub? No, I'm going to call him and tell him to start running towards us and we'll pick him up on the way. All right, you hear, he goes, well, just, what, are you just having a drink? No. You know I am. Well, of course you are. Well, uh, with Lerolith. <laughs> oh, shit, yeah. And the chickens. And the chickens. Oh, yeah. Chickens can't drink beer. Where's Cornelius? Oh, no, no, we're just chilling. We just got him on the bar. Are they doing anything fun on the bar? Are you guys oh, going right, back at the mill? <laughs> well, the, the no, if, mill. if everyone's there, then we'll pick them up from Yeah. The so <laughs> Lerolith, the is, Lerolith has taken the form of... You've noticed that, that they're, like, experimenting with different people. <laughs> so they're, like, hopping in. They're, like, no, now now they look like the old guy that was at the bar that kept going, right? <laughs> <laughs> and just sat there, like... And then, I... like water just like the drink just pulls down the chair. <laughs> Lara, let's just finding his, their true form. And yeah. I love that. <laughs> How are you finding this get up? Goes back to um the current safe form, which is uh Florin. Weird Florin. <laughs> yeah. Ah. Often. Yeah, uncanny for Florin. It's just a little bit off. Yeah. Unsure. Oh. Can you turn cool. into an owl? Uh, that would be too small. You would really like, big like, big a real owl. big owl. A giant <laughs> really fucking... What about an owlin? <gasps> an owlin? I have so never tried. A race of people. Not not owl race. Which you, they could probably try and do a massive owl. But Go and do it. Please. Would it be appropriate to do it here? No. <laughs> <laughs> it's always appropriate. We to can do it, it on the train. Oh yes, public transport is a very good place to do that instead. No carriage. one's going to be on the train. No one uses public transport anymore. Hey, Amaya. If he turns into an owl, can I rename him? No. <laughs> <laughs> Not even Albert. Oh, I don't think Lerolith would consent to that. Well, what what's the plan for you lot then today? Oh, for your lot, Larry. <laughs> <laughs> Mary comes out the back of the bar. Uh, as she comes out, the guy on the bar goes, Are you all right? <laughs> <laughs> Nobody tells me nothing. Nobody tells me nothing. Oh, you'll be pleased to know that your uh, oh, I forgot a voice. You'll be pleased to know your visitor has woken up with a, a banging headache, and I sent him on his way this morning. Thank you. Um, Thanks, mum. <laughs> what did he say? Ryan. He was really, really offensive. He's quite homophobic. <laughs> oh, 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 fucking... oh my god. Can I have advantage because it's no. pride? <laughs> you can roll a god. What is it? I'm, I'm kind of uh, deception have, check. Jesus Christ. Can I have advantage because it's pride? Uh, the same as I hate Chris. <laughs> <No>. Fine. <laughs> It's a, mean, it's a meaningless check, so sure. <laughs> it's a natural 18 plus 9, so it's 20. She gets really mad. <laughs> I'll be but, having words with him. Cool. <laughs> I can only apologise. I don't know why it wasn't It wasn't against me. Okay, well. It was against me. me. It was, it was against me. Oh, I see. I'm, I apologize. Very obviously. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't want to say, like, obviously, but... Obviously. Have you met <laughs> <laughs> Genderless well, creature. My dear, I apologise. Um, I would give you some cider brandy on the house, but... I did. All out. But yeah, I <laughs> bought quite a lot of that. Sorry. She walks over to Eugene and she just hugs you. Oh, my boy. I'm going to miss you again. Oh. She pats you on the shoulder. 
Would you like some treats for the road? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> She goes and gets some like chocolate. Uh, this like, isn't the first time. Iced buns. <laughs> there you go. Puts it down. <laughs> there you go. She gives <laughs> everyone. There you go. Oh. Oh. Thank you, Miss Mrs. Mary, lady. Yes, my dear. Um, can I ask you a question? Of course. <laughs> 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 no. <laughs> um, does does the name Rorigan mean anything to you? Rodigan, no. Oh, uh, no, that's yeah. disappointing. Okay, fine. No, why? <laughs> Nothing, you just sound very much like him. We thought he might be like your ex-husband or your brother or something. <laughs> <laughs> Those are the only options. Ex-brother. I see. Husband. Ex-brother? <laughs> Ex-brother, husband. <laughs> Ex-brother, husband. Or <laughs> No. I'm, uh, no, I'm afraid not, dear. Oh, okay. That's all. I was just wondering. So My curiosity got the better of me. Okay. Thanks, Bye. Thanks on the nose. <laughs> I sneeze. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, how tall is she? She's not very tall. <laughs> no, she's taller than Eugene, but she's not very tall. She's, she's like 5'2 or something. My hay fever's really playing up here. That's all right. Okay. <laughs> Sneezing in her face. <laughs> all right. right well. Train. Well, you're Thank taking you. the right way. Okay. And she points you out the door. <laughs> Take the main road. Oh, Eugene, you know. Thank you so much for your hospitality. You're Thank welcome. You. I leave a tip. I hope to see you soon. Yeah, I leave yes. like 10 gold. I'll leave a two Very gold nice. tip because I gave her so much money in booze. <laughs> Very nice. She waves Bye. you off. Okay. So, you guys, in the afternoon, probably approaching kind of, you've had your iced buns on the way, hands are all sticky. Gone. <laughs> the yeah. minute we step out, it's just like, hop. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I didn't get one. Oh, <laughs> Somebody oh. only got one. Uh, Tom, don't eat Eugene's iced bun. That's his. You guys step on the road, and as you uh, you make your way, you eat your iced buns, your fingers are all sticky. I have a story, but I'll tell that in, in the break. <laughs> oh, okay. It's not bad, but I just want to derail. <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, and you move... Down the so the cobbles turn into compact earth, and then uh, after a while, you hear a carriage from behind you um, trundling. <laughs> trots up behind you. Do we have to wave it down? Are we getting on this carriage? What? What's up? Well, the carriage pulls up beside you. Hello. You notice that it is the guy who is at the bar. Shit. Uh, oh, no, you're right. They're actually homophobic. <laughs> no, the guy who sat there drinking the entire time. Oh, okay. Wondered if you wanted a, a lift or something. No, thanks. No, to work. All right. To work. <laughs> oh. To work. <laughs> awesome. Where are you going? To the runway. Oh, yeah, I'll hop on. Sick. <laughs> Oh, takes you, you. All right. uh, and you start moving along his carriage is going not much faster than walking oh well um, pleasant company <laughs> is it <laughs> is it just silent do we just yeah <laughs> uh, perfect no no I'll do, do some studying then if we're just in silence where are you doing right way Eugene yeah I'll draw away can you translate <laughs> <laughs> he said where are you all heading to then uh, to the rutway. So, oh, how are you going to the rutway? <laughs> said, I know that. Where are you going at the rutway? I, I gathered. Yeah. <laughs> Sahara so after that. Ah, uh, right, yeah, of course, yeah. Yes, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the dog we need. <laughs> well, you speak to the guy in a ticket uh, uh, to give you a lift discount. Ooh. Oh, that'd be very kind of you. Thank uh, you. Sorry. What's your name? Dylan. What? Denim. Denim? D- Dave. <laughs> <laughs> Darren? Denim? Denim? Like I'm not Jim telling John, you. John, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to make that, like, ah, oh, nice to meet you. No. <laughs> There's Adam. Oh, I say Dave. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I, 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 I speak to? village. Where, yeah, where, where where is he, what, can you find out where he's off to today? <laughs> well, what are you doing today after this? Where are you off to? Oh, will probably go back to the pub. She's just giving us more. What the fuck? She's giving us more. Where are you? Oh, sorry, gone. So you you left the pub to on the carriage. You're going away from the pub. Oh yeah, Matt, uh, Mary told me get the butt away. You throw you hop on, give her a lift. Oh, oh nice. that makes sense. Oh, okay. yes, Mary. You're just nice. You're just a nice guy. I do my best. You uh... <laughs> Can I? 
I want to use the term balls on this motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> the more yeah. we're talking to him, the more I'm like, Mary would have just said <laughs> to us, <laughs> detect thoughts. Yeah. Nothing's going on. <laughs> Empty. He's just chilling. A little him. bit of buzz. It's like he's got nice. a bit of a buzz on. He's drinking this morning. He's not much work anymore. He's driving drunk. Uh, <laughs> for, uh, no, I've got plenty going on for him. Oh, good. What kind of? What do you? What do you? What kind of farm is it? Oh, uh, we'll call it great uh, grains and uh, <laughs> no great great no sorry great. Can't get worried out. It's bloody uh, strong. Uh, uh, you know the uh, bears and stuff. Oh, we like swaying on the horse. <laughs> yeah. Horses going. Oh, I'm so like, drunk. <laughs> <Greg and Ben. laughs> if we got, we keep an eye out for road, like the road police. Oh, the road no, police. You, no, I don't think yeah. <laughs> <laughs> can I? Can I? Can I go sit outside of the carriage? Just make sure. Yeah. All right. What are you looking out for? Other road users. All right, and the police in case we're going to get pulled a over police. for drink driving. <laughs> yeah. Roll the uh, police check. Otari Knights, as you know. Police check. And um, what was it? Perception. Yeah. Uh, but every day our sun's out. It's beautiful. Out. What did you get? 22. <laughs> um, you, you look out the back, you don't see anyone following, you look out the front pretty empty on the roads every now and again a big carriage could trundles past uh, like much faster than you guys on the way to Sahara um, are, are we being a, a lane being hogger yeah uh-huh. uh, Dave have there been any uh, strange people about the uh, town recently well he's ranger in you well yeah so <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah well, there's a couple where uh, and I'm a uh, Bloody uh, Abe one of them from the old uh, uh, parries and stuff from their horses. Have they been here long? No, I was coming through back and forth looking in the out. Also, a few times. Oh, yes. Strange lot, I'm. Yeah, I'm very much in real way. Well, when, so they, when, they go, when they go and come back, like, are we talking weeks, days, hours? Um, I don't know, we got a huge town farm. No, no, pay attention. <laughs> oh, you see everything, though, don't you, Dave? I, 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 I. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for this. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Oh, here we go. Here, Bob. You pull up to the right way. Uh, how much was he going to uh, charge for this yeah. fucking how long, how, long was, yeah, how long was that? <laughs> You're on it for maybe like 40 minutes. Um, and okay. that was the that was the length of the conversation. <laughs> there yeah. was no quiet yeah. moments. Um, uh, this, you, you pull up, but you see that the station itself is, is, is... The road was really quiet, some of it's overgrown, and as you approach okay, the right way... Gold. Yeah, you can try. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, yeah, 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 go on. Well, no, you, buy yourself a drink. Buy yourself and some others a drink. Buy around. Uh, you buy fine one paper. I give him five gold. It's getting worse. <laughs> it's because it's sinking in. The drink is sinking in. <laughs> uh, make sure you drive back slowly, Okay. Oh, I do it one not worry about that. <laughs> there you Very slowly walks up, uh, trots Walks off. next to the carriage. <laughs> yeah. And you forgot, your, you forgot your horse. You forgot your horse. Not again. <laughs> okay. okay, so the station um, itself is... Oh, boy. Uh, I missed Dave already. <laughs> oh, it was great. Uh, is a vast network of crossing steel beams and whitewashed panelling. There's lichen and moss that's sort of cl- like clinging to the, the outside of the round walls. Almost looks a bit like a, a sort of barn, but it's um, newer with the steel um, parts. Um, a bit like an upturned boat, actually, probably to you guys. Um, and you, you, you move up the steps into this large open space, it's quiet, so there are ticket booths. All of them are shut except for one. Um, and the wood on them is kind of faded and weathered. Um, and there's this sort of lonely looking human man there with his like, he's like got his hand on his cheek and he's kind of nodding off. Oh, budget cut, eh? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh well. Just like one of Bolter's brains. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? No, 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 no. <laughs> Hello. Oh, okay. Uh, hey, mate. You all right? Yeah. Where are you going? Sahara, uh, please. Sahara. Yeah. Okay. Hand you tickets. Yeah, yeah Dave said to ask for a discount. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Insert anything <laughs> here. There you go. There's a silver off that. Four silver apiece. Oh, nice. Do we want to do it off there the great fund? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. 
This is why I wanted to have a group fund so we didn't have to worry about our train fare. <laughs> just do it. Just do it. Account it. Sorry, how many hours does Boxy get a child's dinner? Uh, so <laughs> four, <laughs> four times seven. You can get. So there's, but there's Larylith as well. Um, um, so eight of you. Eight. So, chickens no, don't count. Chickens don't count. count. Chickens don't count. Yeah, for 3.2 gold. Cool. And he hands out handwritten tickets to each of you. Next boat's in about half an hour. Boat? Oh, yeah. That's a, yeah. I thought really? it was a train. It's like a boat, but it's connect- it's a, there's a, it's connected by like a chain and it. So basically, what you're along. saying is that this, this is, is a boat. This is the this is the ride at Legoland where you get on a boat. Oh, it's exactly. It I was thinking that, Yeah, literally. I was thinking <laughs> this sounds like a. a Train of my train as a boat. <laughs> <laughs> and then he. You call these things he, trams. <laughs> a water tram. It's a water tram. It's a, bam. A wham. It's a water. It is a water yeah. train. A wow. Yeah. Um, you move into the station, and you can see that this place is built to house hundreds of people, and you are the only people here. Um, it is empty and open. There's like stalls throughout. It would have once probably been a bustling marketplace. And when you came, when you came here a long time ago, Eugene, when you first arrived or first set out on your journey to the Alchemy Guild, it was busy. It was bustling, and it was very much like, oh God, this is what the city's going to be like. But here it's quiet now. Um, How long have we got? Do we need to go get coffee in the the upper (laughs) grounds? They're all closed. They're a Cornish pasty. I'm getting myself a pasty. It has to be open. You go up to there. There are none of them are open. You guys are the only people here. Not even a Smiths. No, not even a Smiths. (laughs) On another system. That famous (laughs) state. And. you can just see, yeah, they're like skeletons of market stalls, the odd Should rats. Skeletons. <laughs> <laughs> like the framework of it. Sad, um, and there's the odd rats, like skitters Don't from wall to wall. Um, and then you, you, you stand before the Rutway Canal. <laughs> Don't. No. <laughs> He'll kill uh, you. <laughs> you, uh... Oh, well. <laughs> speak the furniture. <laughs> God. <laughs> what happened here? <laughs> You can do what you want. <laughs> so People just kept stopped coming, didn't they? Yeah, no. Well, it sounds like all of the, any funding that was coming in, Lucard fucked off, and now nobody cares for the place anymore. It seems so. Um, and as you approach the sort of edge of the Rutway Canal, it is literally like a canal that cuts through the building itself. And you can see if you follow it back from you know up the current. Uh, you can see that it loops as it enters the station from the far side, so this is likely the end of the line um, as boats would come down through and then past you and then up and back out. Um, um, the Rutway Canal is wide enough to fit um, pr- probably four canal boats abreast from what you are aware of, um, and the half an hour pass is quite long, you know, there's nothing to do, there's no stalls. Um, you see the odd private canal boat kind of punting along every now and again as people are using it for their own purposes because it's so empty. Um, and then uh, there's a couple of people on like shard work propel boats as well. They chug through. Um, they look around at the abandoned station like, oh gosh, what happened here? Um, and then at the far side, coming into the into the station, the canal boat arrives. Is a double decker boat with an Hell open yeah. top. Oh, um, man. oh we got the top at the front. Water fitting. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Waiting. <laughs> yeah. um, and at the front, uh, like one of those open, like the front of a bus, there's a an orc driver, um, and he's in a sharp navy outfit. Um, and he blue pulls up. Blue or navy, like a navy style outfit. Oh, just blue. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and you see as he pulls up, there's this big arm, this winch at the front that goes. And raises up, and the boat comes to a stop. Um, and he waves you on. He checks your tickets, kind of like biting his lip. Each one, the boat's empty. Um, as you, as you, as you oh, guys... I runs up the stairs and right to the front, and it's like <laughs> <laughs> up to the front, up the top. It's got this good view of the abandoned station. Um, and as you take your seat, you guys are alone with the driver below you. Um, he seems pretty pleased to have passengers. Um, and he moves down to the front, just below the stairs. You can see him, um, and then you're watching down below the 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 arm that was up unlatches from the front of the boat. It is like a literally a grabby arm, and it goes down and it pokes up from poking up in the air. He unlatches a chain and it drops into the water, like, 
and you see it grab grab onto the brass chain that's snaking through under the water. Uh, and then the moment the arm grabs it, the boat lurches forwards at surprising speed, um, and the driver begins ringing the bell um, for for like drivers or like punters to move out of the way. Um, beep, beep, motherfucker. <laughs> yeah. um, and you are on your way. And the journey, so it takes a while. It takes. I mean, this journey will take the rest of the day at least, and you'll probably arrive later into the evening. Um, but with each passing hour, um, the thick coniferous forest that you trekked through and camped, well, in the subtle house, but you did spend the night in the forest, I guess. Um, you, that coniferous forest gives way to golden fields, wheat, um, and sunflowers, and barley, and eventually multicolored herbs, ingredients for alchemy, um, and the air becomes perfumed and floral. And the smell of the canal itself is that kind of moss, mossy freshness of moving water. Um, and you move past fishermen, that are like chaperoning young nobles on, on the canals. Um, and you soon see, on the horizon, you see Sahira, the city of cities. Um, oh, the greatest city in all the world. So vast, it fills beyond the curvature of the, of the view that you can see. Um, the spires of the noble district, the bristles combing the sky. And soon, you join with the roads either side of you and carriages and coaches trotting along outside the canal. And it seems that that even though Baraxas was quiet, the travel into the city remains. It's just that people are not going through Baraxas as much. Um, and it, it is busy and they're kicking up dust out of the side of the canal. Um, and the closer you get, other canals join in the tributaries, um, the river, the canal forming into more like a river, this wide and great, pathway through the fields boats leather there are leisure crafts the size of inns and the sound but the sound is silent you're approaching the city just the wind and and the other boats chugging along and the kind of grating of the chain underneath the boat every now and again and the shining walls the marble walls of sahira tower over you and they dwarf the canal boat uh, and as you approach, it is shocking in its size. For those of you who've not been in here before, it is vast, taller than you think you believed stone could be stacked. Um, and you enter through a gateway as large as the as the Del Nori Sea Gate, probably larger. Um, this one is hewn from white and silver marble, and the air shimmers before the boat. And as you pass through a meniscus of magic that makes your ears pop, and then the sound of the city booms over you like a roar of wind and voices. And the city unrolls before you up like a giant amphitheater of bricks, of red sandstone, sparkling granite, and there's a huge wall in the distance behind, rising up even from this section of the city um, to split the upper and lower parts of the city. Um, and you arrive into the lower part, into the waterways, that, and out from this uh, crescent quay are uh, burrow canals out from this quay into the lower city, and the sound of a, of a million voices and smells of spices meld with the canal waters. And it is like a seafront. It is bustling with people, brightly covered canvases, and and towers and you split from the other boats like the leisure craft and you follow the rutway wire the rut rutway wire and you moor up to a section reserved for the runway canal boat the rutway canal boats and the arm unclasps and raises out of the water and the driver tips his hat at you as, as you pull up and it's drifts to a stop um, and he kind of half up the stairs, looks up at you, goes, Welcome to Sahira. Thanks. Oh. <laughs> You're all right. Okay. <laughs> You're all good. I'm good. Are you sure? Are you travel sick? Yeah. A little bit. Yeah. No, wait, I love On a boat. boat. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> and a canal as well. I'm just nervous, I guess. It's been a while. But wow. how busy it was here, to be honest. <laughs> I kind of miss the desert. 
I mean, I don't. Yeah, it's, 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 it's too wet here. We should just go back. Uh, yeah. yeah, should we just just go? We just go in the woods again. That was great. <laughs> yeah. well, no, the woods are too wet. Stay, oh, in, I love them. stay in the <laughs> desert. It's dry. Nah, sand gets everywhere. So, those of you who are from the city, so Eugene and Freya, you have much more of an understanding of the city. So, you would know that that the uh, I could probably I've got a I mean it's a rough You've got sketch a map. <laughs> I'm making a map but it's a rough sketch at the moment <laughs> this is the circle that you entered so this is the <laughs> this lower... looks like a science diagram <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's a butthole <laughs> this is the lower city um, which is you say butthole, which is made up this is the key here this is the butthole this is the canal and this is the area known as the Mercantilo which is a residential district I'll tell you about in a second and this circle here is the lower city the whole part it's vast this is the residential quarter up here this is the artisano quarter where there's a lot of like master craftsmen I talked about in that set with my notes Any master bakers uh, <laughs> this circle here is the, the canal market, which is like, uh, well, we can describe it in a minute as well. Um, and then, so just to give you a scale, this is vast, and it's huge. This is the rest of the city. <laughs> and how big does Del Nori fit in that Del for context? Nor- Del Nori would fit comfortably in, in the lower city down here. Just in yeah. the water, right, oh, okay. Huge. <laughs> so... Um, We're going to get lost. I will probably give so you a map a properly, yeah. but um, eventually. Um, so those of you who are familiar would be able to describe um, the lower city is... So the mercantile quarter of the lower city is primarily tenement housing, the canal markets and inns. Um, if you can travel into the upper city through intercity um, like travel, there's other foot, the old rutway, which is uh, um, an, a literally canals within the city. Um, or you can hire a guide who will take you coach to coach. Um, but uh, you, Eugene and Freya probably know that there are a lot of crooks around, so you gotta be careful. Yeah. Okay, that's rude. I'm not that much of a crook. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Take the metro. <laughs> yeah, but the old rutway is like a narrow two-way canal that snakes through the old quarter up into the other areas. And the, the the general structure of the city is that where you are at the moment in the lower, if you were to go up, you'd get into the central part of the upper city and from that you can access the Cora Central District or the Guild Central District or like the Apophaos Central and then you'd go through those into the deeper parts of each district so the chorus so Freya for example you were like all the way over to the west side in your own Juness part of the chorus district same as Eugene you were all the way over in the east part of the city in the far alchemy headquarters up against the wall of the city itself where were, the four, West side. where were the three places for um, sigillos that were broken? Uh, in Sahira. Mm-hmm. Chorus, Chorus and, and Guild. There you go. Yeah. Thank you. And they were all broken. Yeah. Broked. <clears throat> okay. So it's you, like the end of the day, right? Yes, it is actually quite late. It's probably approaching 11 p.m., 10, p, 10 to 11 p.m. at this point. Oh, we should find somewhere to yeah. Yeah. bug down. We don't want to be moving around at night, really. Yeah. Is that like a premier in? Yeah. Do one of me and Freya know a good in around here? Or an acceptable in? Yeah, in roll either of you roll a roll history. A mm, would it be history? Survival. <coughs> Whatever you want, really. Yeah, while, yeah, while we were on, yeah. on this, yeah. while we were on the book, <laughs> I um, um, copied that scroll into my spell book now, so I have, so I have that. Now. Very nice. Very nice. Yeah, it's a good. Yeah, not a pretty enough time. Yeah. What was yeah, it? Yeah, I only, yeah, only had like four hours mm. left on it. So. Yeah. What check was it? Uh, either intelligence <coughs> or, well, history, his intelligence, do history. Oh, uh, in that case, I got like 28. Fucking hell. Oh, all 16. Right. <laughs> okay. Eugene knows stage. all of the pubs. <laughs> yeah. like, oh. Mostly in the chorus, I guess. That's Ooh. true. For like yeah, uh, many years. So, um, the, yes, the Mercantilo district takes up most of the space here. Um, the only really interesting parts to Eugene that you remember was the key, because it was, like, quite open and airy. And then the other parts were, the I don't know if you braved it, but the canal market, um, which you've heard of, 
Um, and the canal market is like a delta of canals that come together and it's in an opening and it's just full it's just full of people selling on boats, on like stilts, uh, all sorts. Uh, in terms of inns, uh, you stayed in one called the Big Ol' Lantern. <laughs> <laughs> is it the Big Ol' Lantern? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, which is in a narrow alleyway off towards the canal market. But you were also aware of the Silver Griffin. Um, and Freya, you stayed in one called the Whispering Wand, which was Ooh. sort of in the in the res, deeper into the residential part. The closest one would probably be either the Big Old Lantern. Oh. I don't want to stay in the Big Old Lantern. The Whispering is a Big Old Lantern. Is it a Big Old Lantern? Is it? Is it? Yeah. What did I think of it? Uh, let me just check. Is it a Big Old Lantern? <laughs> Can you light it up? Um, Please. It is, no, it was nice, it was cozy. Um, a lot of the places in here can be touristy. Um, this one, you didn't get that vibe, but you were just desperate for just to rest at the time. Go yeah. to Big Old Lantern if you want. Big I trust your judgment. Lantern. <laughs> okay, cool. So you move along the quay um, and it's like, the wall of, of this place is so big that it cuts the moon in half and gauged like the, the mauve glow is kind of cut in half by this huge wall. You remember the, the cliffs in Del Nori and this just feels so much more vast. Um, and you move along the, the canal, um, kind of trying to keep out of the alleyways for now until Eugene, you're like, okay, I think it was down here. Um, and you start moving down the, you're walking alongside canals that come off of the quay and they then snake into the into the city. The buildings themselves are like, I mean, in our, the closest kind of example would be like Parisian townhouses with the, um, with the, um, the cast iron, um, balconies on each floor and they go up to like seven stories and it's all very narrow even the canals could barely fit two down you snake through those and eventually not far from the opening you can see the kind of light off the waters of the canal market you find the big old lantern um, hidden in one of these alleyways uh, it's cozy it's multi-storied um, it looks like it's like whitewashed and for some reason all of the, the wooden like um, the wooden fittings have been painted a bright red um, and you step inside it's cozy it's welcoming there's a soft glow of lanterns everywhere there's just <coughs> lanterns on all walls um, inside and outside they're not magical um, but they are you remember the comforting light of them like firelight um, and inside there's lots of sofas it's a very it's designed for people to just feel comfortable and eat at ease um very like plush seating a crackling fire and there's a huge dwarf that's five foot six what um, as usual a dwarf. What? <laughs> and he's like Sorry. taller than me yeah all right uh, big ten <laughs> big ten <laughs> huge you want to uh you're looking for a room it's getting late yes no all right and he moves at like a glacial pace <laughs> over to the keys on the wall. So is your first name Big? <laughs> no, it's my nickname. There we go. Are you, how many rooms do you want? You got, we only got three, you can give you that. What how you many want? beds are in a room? Yeah, up to four. Two? All right. Yeah. We yeah. two it together. Yeah. There you go. It's your first night here, isn't it? You've, got, you've just got the fresh face of people coming off the... Uh, Carriage. No. no. Fuck. <laughs> 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 All right. Well, are you eating? Yeah. Yeah. We've got a little bit left. Uh, we've we we've, we've got a big pot of stew on. Basically, is so I can warm that back up if you want. Yeah. yeah. All right. No storytelling yeah. this evening. Too late for that. It might be on tomorrow night. All right. Well, so we're not allowed to tell our own stories. <laughs> you can do whatever you want in the privacy of your own room, but it's quiet down here now. Past, uh, it's getting late. All right. I'll bring you stew up. Oh, bed stew. Oh, delicious. <laughs> <laughs> how much is uh, how much do? Oh, bloody hell. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. It's uh, one gold a night. Plus and if food. You want food, we'll include this because it's, uh, you know, you're eating leftovers at this point. But uh, Do we get breakfast? Well... Yeah, all right, go on then. If you stay in another whole day, though, it's five silver extra for, for your meals, all right? Fine. Cool. All right. So that's a it gold. I, I trust you, like, you pay in the morning, all right? I'm too tired for this. <laughs> Lovely. So we're sneaking out the window. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so you go up. 
Um, even the like the stairs got lanterns on every wall. You move into the into your bedroom, and you have each got one giant lantern in the middle of the <laughs> wall. And there's like a little in the middle of the room, <laughs> <laughs> like on the wall. And there's like a little uh, one of those. Um, Little rods with a like uh, an upturned bell on the end that you s- put on the on top of the candle to put it out. Um, a bell end. A little bell end. <laughs> <laughs> Quite a large bell end. Nice. If it's a large lantern. Yeah, it's a big bell end. Big old bell end. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Um, so over to you guys. Mm, okay. Well, we just eating and sleeping. Eating and sleeping. Yeah, your oh, stew yeah. arrives. Oh, Is it any good? Wall. It's all right. It's it's actually not bad. Very oniony. But there's some spices in there that, to the Saharan palate of, of Eugene and Freya, you would recognise as, uh, because the city has got so much in terms of resources, spices are put in everything. So they just throw... It's sometimes not even good. <laughs> Literally just, just, oh, we've got this. Yeah, Guys, so it's... Yeah. While we're here, we absolutely have to get some cow trout. Sorry, Have what? I had that before? <laughs> Did you say cow trout? Cloud trout. Cloud. Cloud. Yes, okay, absolutely. that sounds more tasty. I thought you said yeah. cow trout. And can I was you like, also yeah, take exactly. us to somewhere where we can get more spices for her ladyship? I, th- I think I can probably. There's probably some behind the cup in the cupboard or something. There. <laughs> <laughs> it's literally just fallen out of us everywhere. <laughs> it's the, not made yeah, of like the pillows are not made of guess. feather. Yeah, canal market. You definitely yeah. find that. Stuff in the there. public toilets, instead of having like a box of like deodorant and tissues, it's and stuff, just, just spices. <laughs> the pillows are not stuffed <laughs> with feathers, <laughs> just spice. <laughs> 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 Did Magnus say where Mama and the rest of the gang were? He doesn't know. So, cool. No, he was also looking. Okay. Yeah. Have They're not tried... in a big old lantern, are they? Have uh, you tried just walking around going, Mama! Eugene's mum! Eugene's mum! Mrs. Valentine! Mrs. Valentine! Mrs. Valentine! They like. If, to... if only. <laughs> Are they likely to have also sought out like sweet shops and stuff? Maybe. Most certainly. They'd want to at least sample. I can look for one. Go Market research. There's more than one. I will yeah. always do market research at sweet shops. Mm-hmm. <laughs> if that's what's needed, that's what we'll do. We'll do it. We'll be heading to the uh, chorus on the morrow. I suppose. On the morrow. Well, on the morrow. Be so we've got one more day, analyst. right? The analyst was at the reclamation yard, which you, I, I believe, I, I think you're aware of, is at the um, Guild Central district. So you would need to go up into the upper city. Um, I, I can see Corin. Yeah. You know that the the alchemy. Just so you're aware, the alchemy guild is about a day's travel from the center of from the guild central out to the alchemy guild. What? And <laughs> where? Day. And where? Day. From where we are, for whether these two would know, is the bridge that we need to go to. How far is that from here? The bridge is in Miras Kalorn, which is in the Apatheos district. Which is so you're going to go up to say guild. Um, the Guild Central. I'll show you the map. Why am I doing this? <laughs> yeah, you've showed us before. Like, what am I? Because what am I? we yeah. might have to go straight there, but we'll negotiate and be like, hey, we have shit to do, so we can't leave until our <laughs> things are done. It's yeah. going to take us three days to get back from the other side of the city. <laughs> yeah, it's great. <laughs> so you are down here, and the no Guild Central is there, and the Apatheos Central is here, oh, sorry. and... Oh, sorry. So you're down here... The Guild Central is there, the rest of the Guild is here, and the Apatheo Central is in the middle here. Is that like a day's travel to get up there? From there? Uh, to no, get, from uh, where we from are. From here, probably most of the day to get to the Guild Central. <laughs> the Apatheos, where we're Ap- going for the bridge. If you're already in Guild or from where you from are? From where we are. Probably most of the day. Okay. Yeah, but if you're already in Guild, it's quite close. Um, Yes. So what we probably want to do is go up that way, find the hotel for this for the night that is. Yeah, I was going to say we probably want one more central because we otherwise it's going to like it's going to be a whole yeah. day to get up to where we yeah, need to we go. Yeah, we definitely want to stay more after. central. So we leave early. Yes, yeah, so we can do some more stuff in the day. Okay. And then we've got a whole day to get over there and do anything weird, and then we can see them tomorrow, <laughs> the day after when we're supposed to. It's quicker from the lower up into the central, actually, because you can use the old rutway, whereas when you're up there, it's just carriages. Where's, so. your, where's your uh, uncle based? Thom? Yeah. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> Thom? Uncle Thom? Uncle Thom? Uncle Thom is in Uncle the Thong. alumno 
which is up in the central residential. So as you go up, it's like residential central area and then central. So it's like a large area where for middle class people, mm -hmm. but you also have people who work in those houses. Um, so and I don't we think you... check, we could check in on him on the way up. Uncle? He's always fun. We'll go check him on him on the way up. He's on the way. Yeah. That's a detour I'll take. <laughs> I don't think he has enough room in this house for everyone to stay. But we can say hello. Have a coffee. <laughs> Just a quick coffee. Quick Just a quick coffee, say hello. <laughs> <laughs> that was such a musical little kick. <laughs> okay, so what's the plan? Everyone going to bed? Got, bed early, I guess. No, you've got two sendings to do. Very well. I have a sending to do as well. Okay. Well, I'm we... doing my always sending that we don't need to do. Well, you what, Kaz? Yeah. Okay, she has already written to you. Shit. Ooh. Uh oh. How? It's not how that spell <laughs> works, anyway. Is it not? No. Oh, okay, then the it's moment that you write to her, she okay. pops up. Like she said it ready and she pastes it in. <laughs> uh, it says. Fuck. Um, I know that we're going to bend in the rules, which is fuck it. It's just all this and go in one go. Uh, I've started work. I've started working on a new network through our good friend Mordrin. Lovely. It's been easier than I expected. Great. Seems like all it took was moving from the barren wasteland surrounding our lovely hometown, and well, <laughs> turns out that I actually know quite a lot of people. Um, Who'd have thought? Anyway, it's the beginnings of a network, at least. Um, this Milton fellow. You asked me about. Um, oh hello. fuck! I forgot I did that. <laughs> well, it's a good. Well, I mean, I, I, thanks for you know. I, I thought this is important. It is really uh, important. I <laughs> forgot. It's been two weeks since I asked you. To do this. <laughs> okay. Well, it's a good test for this, you know, budding network. Anyway, um, I have something. Not much, but something. The name Milton Ballantyne only shows up in a place called Boraxus. Yeah. Awful snooty sounding place. Um, it's just off. The it's lovely, road. and I've bought you some fire, some cider brandy from there, so you can shove up. It's oh, nice. Okay. <laughs> Don't be rude. Apologies. I just thought you know the property must be through the roof there. Anyway, good <laughs> thing. <Liable>. Um, <laughs> we could get me there for a steal, my love. <laughs> <laughs> Conversation for another day. <laughs> uh, it's a pretty good commute in uh, to the city. Uh, anyway, after this Milton uh, left Boraxus many years ago, there has been no sign of that name at all, except once. Um, a source of mine that has now got access to confessions because it seems that the choruses have gone back to using paper, um, which makes things a lot easier, to be honest. Um, Long story short, the name Eugene Ballantyne came up, not Milton. And the reason that I say it was suspect was because it was about six months ago, um, and I doubt this was your Eugene. So you can ask him if you like. Ask Where were him. We? we were in the desert six months ago. Pro yes, probably. Yes, you would have been. Ask him if he visited a small chapel to Juness in the Sweepings. Um, the Sweepings is. Uh, so the bristles is the noble district and it's like towers and the richer you are the higher up you live the the sweepings is the undercity which is just the basically the area of sewage that no one goes beneath the bristles um what in what place that's in the upper part of the city it's in what the, city sahira right <laughs> <Sorry>. he's kept <laughs> saying the city <laughs> This, There's many. So the bristles is like where all the nobles live, and the sweepings is like the undercity beneath the the towers. Um, a small chapel to Juness in the sweepings, and then reportedly crawled into a hole in a wall off of a main road. He, I'm sorry. <laughs> he does crawl into a lot of holes. <laughs> and oh, <laughs> probably should mention he was a gnome. There you are. Like, that practice. is impressive. Oh, thank you. Damn. All right. Who's in your new network? You found uh, Commander Skeel? Blake um, Commander Skeel? No. Rude. I, don't, I mean, I, is that actually something you want me to do? No, because he's probably gone underground because he wants to look after his family. Ah. Boring. Yes, very well. Okay. Is there anything else we wanted to look up while I'm talking to her? Anyone? No one a trace on anyone? Oh, like maybe where uh, Mama is in the city. Can you try and find out where Eugene's Mama, Mama is? Does she have a name? Is it Mama? Uh, Beatrice. <laughs> 
Beatrice Valentine. Lovely. Well, another Valentine. Uh, there, are, there are so many. Of them. <laughs> like, you thought there were a lot of us, as in there, there were a lot of Valantes. There's more. Well, like rabbits, the Valentine. <laughs> oh, Do you want to look up for Skillies? <laughs> yeah. It's probably um, actually all right, because I've, I have done a lot of research anyway, so I'll just. Just start again. Anyway. Thanks, my love. All right, night night. Hi, I love you. Love you. UG! <laughs> uh, why are we yelling? Milton might be in town. Really? As your name came up about six months ago in the, in a in a small temple to Juness. Oh, yes, religion in, scares which me. Which is I also do that fucking my own. weird. Yeah. But like six months ago when we were in the desert, so it couldn't yeah, have been you. No. So someone was pretending to be you. Who would do such a thing? Milton. <laughs> would he? Maybe. Corin? Yeah, could maybe. Corin. Oh, Corin. Corin. No, no a... Corin isn't that brazen. He's a... So it was a gnome, and then they went in a hole in the middle of the street. <laughs> and you love holes. Oh, We've seen you Peter. go in so many. <laughs> in hide and seek, yes. <laughs> but... So we, he, we've got to start. It's in the sweepings. Near a small chapel to Juness, we see any holes, we're going in them! Because that might be where the milk's going! It's hole time! It's hole time, my friend! Oh we're going to find Milton. <laughs> and I've also, we're going to try and find, we're going to try and find your mum. Oh, thank you. Hey, she's really good at finding stuff out. I don't think out. she's in the big old lantern. I don't think she's here. <laughs> You would have been a weird coincidence. <laughs> what are the chances? This town city is very large. I would a D10,000, not 69. So <laughs> right, well, before we dive into the many sendings, we will... That is where we'll end today's <gasps> episode. Thanks for joining us. You can follow us on Twitter or Instagram and listen to us wherever you get your podcasts.